Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our Sampi University Research Symposium presentation. My name is Jay Shin, a graduate research assistant from MC Gill Composite Center at University of Southern California. The topic I'll discuss today is in situ resin age assessment using dielectric analysis and resin cure map for efficient vacuum infusion. I'll first briefly explain what vacuum infusion is, which is a type of liquid composite molding. In vacuum infusion, we place a dry fiber preform on a mold, seal with a vacuum bag, and then infuse and cure resin under vacuum pressure. This process uses a one-sided rigid mold and thus enables a, low, enables a low cost manufacture of large and complex unitized structures. Interest in vacuum infusion is growing rapidly, particularly in the aerospace industry, which seeks to reduce the costs associated with conventional autoclave processing. Erkut, a Russian aircraft manufacturer, uses vacuum infusion to fabricate 18 meter long outer wings of MC-21 commercial aircraft. The wing skins and stringers are integrally molded to minimize I integrally molded and co-infused to minimize post-mold assembly and mechanical fastening. Airbus also uses vacuum infusion process to manufacture seven meter long and four meter wide upper cargo door of A400 and military cargo plane. However, because vacuum pressure alone is applied during the infusion, vacuum infusion endures slow infusion rate and long fill time. In SCRIMP, for semen composites resin infusion molding process, a flow distribution medium is inserted on top of the preform to enhance resin flow and reduce fill time. Yet, the addition of the flow distribution medium can induce unacceptable levels of porosity or may not even be applicable to some complex part geometries. To mitigate this issue, resin is often heated during filling, although doing so can increase resin degree of cure and viscosity with flow time and distance. Even for scrimp, the problem of evolving resin viscosity can persist, particularly as part size increases. Aerospace grade thermoset resins designed for vacuum infusion process have relatively short shelf life and out life. These resins generally require multiple steps of pre-processing, including room temperature preconditioning after cold storage and preheating for infusion pot transfer, degassing, and infusion. Throughout the protracted pre-processing steps, the resin degree of cure will advance, reduce, reducing resin life. In addition, each infusion trial generates waste resin because excess resin is generally prepared to ensure uninterrupted impregnation of preforms. Use of expired or aged resin requires accurate and meticulous tracking of resin thermal, thermal history, including shelf life, out life, and working time, which is often difficult to accomplish in practice. Otherwise, additional thermal analysis must be conducted to assess resin life prior to each infusion run. And thus, expired or aged resin is often discarded for convenience, resulting in economic loss and environmental hazard. Several previous studies have identified the common manufacturing problem of liquid molding resin waste. However, no remedies were offered to guide effective process adjustments to mitigate this issue aside from mixing aged resin with fresh resin at an arbitrary ratio to reduce viscosity for, for infusion. In this work, we demonstrate a new method to accurately assess the physical state of resin using in-situ process diagnostics coupled with cure modeling. We develop a new resin cure map by correlating a cure kinetics model to dielectric, ana dielectric analysis data and by plotting degree of cure isolines across different temperatures using an ion viscosity model. Using these tools, 
we can directly convert resin ion viscosity measurement obtained from dielectric tour monitoring system into a useful metric for resin life. We also demonstrate how to use this metric to enable on the fly process adjustments for vacuum infusion to compensate for resin age. We conduct heated infusion simulation to determine the effects of infusion temperature and resin age on the maximum resin flow distance. Then we develop a resin flow map to guide efficient selection of resin age adjusted infusion process parameters. The vacuum infusion resin used in this study is Hexel Hexflow RTM6 epoxy resin. We analyze and model resin cure kinetics and viscosity evolution using differential scanning calorimetry and rheometry. The ion viscosity evolution during, uh, during epoxy resin cure is monitored in situ using dielectric cure monitoring system. The heated filling process simulation is conducted using PEMRTM software to validate and refine the infusion process map and to develop a flow contour map. The total heat of cure reaction of the epoxy resin, which was obtained from the DSC dynamic ramp test, was 430 joules per gram. The DSC isothermal 12 test data were fit using a phenomenological cure kinetics model developed by Kretz. The solid and dotted lines in the right figure show the measured and model predicted degree of cure profiles. The, of the fitting results demonstrate that the model accurately predicts degree of cure evolution at all four temperatures. The viscosity profile data acquired from rheometry isothermal dual scans were fit using a phenomenological viscosity model developed by Kuhn. The right bottom figure shows the measured data and the model prediction results for the viscosity evolution. Again, the fitting results demonstrate that the model accuracy is high across all four temperatures. The figure on the right here shows the dielectric analysis data obtained during the isothermal dual test. The sigmoidal shapes of the ion viscosity curves resemble the, uh, the profiles for degree of cure and mechanical viscosity, indicating that the three properties are correlated. As the cure state of cure progresses and mechanical viscosity increases, the degrees of both ion mobility and dipole rotation subside, leading to a rise in ion viscosity. Like mechanical viscosity, ion viscosity strongly depends on temperature and can be expressed using the equation on the left. In this equation, all the parameters on the right-hand side are independent of temperature. So this equation can be rewritten as the one that's shown in the red box. Of the two temperature terms, log of temperature and D over temperature, the lettered term dominates the temperature dependence of ion viscosity. So ion viscosity decreases with the increase in temperature. Based on the correlations described, we constructed a resin cure map by plotting ion viscosity along degree of cure isolines across different temperatures. The data points in the resin cure map were plotted by correlating cure kinetics model to dielectric analysis measurement, while the degree of cure or alpha isolines were met by fitting the data points using the ion viscosity model. Both model parameters A and B exhibited a strong linear dependence on resin degree of cure. This straightforward linear relationship enables accurate prediction of resin ion viscosity across a wide span of resin age and temperature, and also minimizes the need for extensive material characterization generally, re generally required for D DA modeling. As an example, Using the described relationship, two additional alpha isolines were constructed for alpha values of 0.01 and 0.05 in the updated cure map shown below. Moreover, using the ion viscosity model, the alpha isolines were extended 
to the resin preheating temperature of 80 Celsius degree. This temperature was the, the most practical temperature at which the resin state can be monitored in situ by simply immersing a dielectric sensor into the preheated resin. At 80 Celsius degree, the ion viscosity values were measured and were compared against the model predicted values. The model prediction result exhibited less than 1% error. Overall, the DCM system enables in situ measurement of resin ion viscosity, which can be directly which can directly be converted into a resin life metric using the cure map we developed. Using these tools, we can monitor resin life in situ dynamically, non-invasively, and repeatably, or to identify specific cure, interest, cure state of interest, such as bell point during actual, pure, during actual part manufacture. We also studied how the resin ages at ambient condition. The resin samples were aged at room temperature for periods up to six weeks. Then the samples were heated using DSC and the heat of and the degree of cure occurred during aging or alpha, or alpha aged was calculated using the equation in the red box. The resulting graph on the right shows that alpha aged increases linearly with increasing out time. The linear regression line yielded alpha aged of 0 0.05 after 15 day out time, which is the manufacturer specified resin out life. After 30 day out time, alpha aged became 0 0.1. The results of this aging study demonstrate that the resin will be suitable for infusion without further material assessment and process adjustment, provided that alpha remains below 0 0.05. Next, we constructed an age-adjusted infusion process map to determine the nominal infusion process window and key process metrics for infusion of an aged resin. In principle, infusion must be completed before the resin gels because resin flow ceases at gelation. In practice, however, once the resin viscosity exceeds a certain threshold value, resin velocity becomes impractically low for further impregnation. In this, in this study, we applied a viscosity threshold of viscosity threshold or eta critical of one pascal second, but this value can readily be adjusted as needed. An example process map on the right shows the model predicted degree of cure profile. Here, an infusion temperature of 120 Celsius degree and an, in, and an initial resin age of 0 0.05 are assumed. At this temperature, the degree of cure at the viscosity threshold or alpha critical is 0 0.38. The cure model predicts that for fresh resin, alpha reaches alpha naught and alpha critical after 85 and 210 minutes at the dual, at the dual temperature. If we subtract the two numbers, we get our nominal infusion window of 125 minutes which is depicted in the red shaded region on the right band. This slide shows a more comprehensive infusion process map and its application. Here, we examine three different infusion temperatures and the initial resin age is increased from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1. As you can see on the right infusion map, the, the, the nominal infusion window becomes narrower with increasing re resin age and infusion temperature. The two figures on the bottom left, which shows the time required for aged resin to reach different levels of viscosity, demonstrate the competing effects of infusion temperature on viscosity. With increasing infusion temperature, the initial viscosity or eta naught decreases, expediting infusion flow. However, Higher temperature also accelerates evolution of resin viscosity and thus consequently decelerates resin impregnation faster. For example, when alpha naught is 0 0.1, we, 
which is represented by the solid lines in the bottom left figures. The initial vis viscosity values are 0 0.06, 0 0.04, and 0 0.03 pascal second at 120, 130, and 140 Celsius degree respectively. However, after 28 and 22 minutes at, at the dwell temperature, the viscosity at 130 and 140 Celsius degree eventually exceed the viscosity at 120 Celsius degree. Beyond these viscosity crossover points, the benefits of higher te infusion temperature vanish because higher infusion temperature only causes viscosity to rise more rapidly, decelerating, decelerating the infusion process. Thus, for an infusion process predicted to saturate before or shortly after reaching the viscosity crossover point, infusing at higher temperature would expedite infusion. Otherwise, infusing at lower temperature would help prevent premature resingelation before infusion completion. The cure reaction for epoxy is exothermic and the heat generated during cure can increase the effective process temperature. The increased temperature can accelerate the cure reaction, producing a greater reaction exotherm, increasing, further increasing the effective process temperature. The thermal runaway effect can become more severe at higher temperature as resin degree of cure and viscosity increase more rapidly. The nominal infusion process window estimated from the previously shown infusion process map does not account for such reaction exotherm and thus is likely to be wider than the process window in practice. Thus, to validate and refine the infusion process map and associated process metrics, heated infusion process was simulated using commercial software PEMRTM. A representative simulation result is shown at the bottom right, where infusion length of 530 millimeters infusion temperature of 120 Celsius degree, and initial resin age of 0.1 are assumed. Under these conditions, the, infu the infusion completed after 33 minutes, and the final degree of cure and the final temperature near the outlet were 0.2 and 128 Celsius degree, respectively. The process simulation results for infusion length of 530 and 600 millimeters are summarized in the bottom left table. For both infusion length, infusing at higher temperature resulted in shorter fill time as expected. However, for 600 millimeter infusion length, the final degree of cure or final uh, or alpha final were higher at infusion temperature indicating that degree of cure increased more rapidly at higher temperature. An infusion length of 670 millimeter was also analyzed using the process simulation. At 120 Celsius degree, the infusion completed after 65 minutes. However, at 130 and 140 Celsius degree, the resin gelled before the infusion completed, leaving unfilled dry regions near the outlet. The unsaturated, the unsaturated area was larger at 140 Celsius degree, demonstrating that the resin viscosity evolved more rapidly at higher temperature. For small parts of simple geometry, infusion is likely to be completed before the degree of cure and viscosity evolved significantly, favoring higher temperature to reduce, reduce fill times. On the other hand, larger, more complex parts and benefit from, from lower infusion temperature because resin viscosity increases more slowly, providing a wider process window. Finally, a parametric simulation study was conducted to determine the effects of resin age and infusion temperature on the maximum resin flow distance. Please note that with increasing initial resin age and infusion temperature, the maximum flow distance decreases, yielding a narrower process window and requiring a more careful process design. The developed flow contour map can be used to guide selection of vacuum infusion process parameters 
including location and number of re resin inlets for infusion temperature. For example, when infusing resin into a preform with 1.1 meter length, any parameter set falling left of the red dashed line in the bottom right figure can assure complete saturation. Aged resin with life that exceeds the X intercept value of the 1.1 meter ISO control line requires use of multiple resin inlets. When an infusion process requires multiple resin inlets, the same contour maps can be used to guide selection of placement of resin inlets or to aid selection of optimal infusion process temperatures. For scrimp, similar flow contour maps can be used and be constructed using three-dimensional flow simulations that account for flow distribution media. This work outlines material characterization and infusion process guidelines for efficient use of aged resin and corresponding process adjustments. Dielectric curve monitoring system enables in-situ measurement of resin ion viscosity, which can directly be converted into a useful metric for resin life using the cure map we developed. We also demonstrate how the process simulation and flow contour map can be used to guide efficient selection of vacuum infusion process parameters and how the process temperature must be adjusted based on part size and geometry as well as resin age. The methodology described in this study can also be extended to other composite manufacturing processes, including resin transfer molding or, or conventional prepreg processing. Prepreg layer process often exposes prepregs to substantially long outlines, causing advances in degree of cure. Using the approaches described here, a uh, resin cure maps and process maps can be developed for prepreg based processes which can be adjusted by modifying cure cycle based on pre-process simulations or analysis of key process metrics, including effective flow, effective flow number. For future work, we plan to develop a process map that accounts for cure exosphere for more accurate prediction of real infusion window. Moreover, the effects of viscosity history during infusion on impregnation or part quality should also be addressed. This study demonstrates how to evaluate and modify process conditions primarily in terms of fill times, but different viscosity history during infusion can also affect dry spot or void formation. Further work is required to address these potential processing concerns and to refine the process guidelines described in this work. I first would like to thank my research advisor, Professor Stephen Nutt, for his insightful guidance, and Dr. Mark Enders for his helpful guidance or for his helpful discussions. I also would like to thank MC Go Composite Center and Airbus Institute for Engineering Research for their generous financial support to our research project, and Hexel for material donations. That was the end of my presentation today, and thank you all for listening.